Shalom Aleichem from First Yahudi Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. I am his servant, Maria Simpson, and thank you for being with us today on this beautiful, gorgeous, sunny, sun, uh, sunny and, and Sunday um, afternoon. It's already afternoon here in Florida. It's 12, a little bit after 12 p.m. So, um, how are you feeling? And I'm so happy to be with you again in, 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 in speaking the word to help you, to strengthen you, uh, to bring you the, the word in season and out of season, and, and to let you know that you are not alone. I know there's things that maybe some of you or all of you or maybe friends of yours or, or people that you know co-workers, whoever it is, but I know some of you are, are going through things that you don't understand why are you going through certain things and you really want to get out. You want to, maybe you feel lonely, maybe you, you feel depressed, maybe, um, maybe a loved one left you or, 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 or you're stressed out. And I can name many things, but I believe that, that this message is specially for you. Do you believe this? Because I do. I do because, uh, see, the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth, He never comes early. He never comes late. He's always on time. See, this is, this is the fascinating thing about Him. He's always on time. See, we are late most of the time, and we don't want to get up from bed, and we are late. We wake up every morning different, but He's always on time. He knows when to, bring, when to bring the word. He knows what to do. He understands what's going on in our lives. He knows. He knows. Let me do a prayer before we start. Abba Kadosh. I thank you, Abba Kadosh, for giving us life. I thank you for Yeshua, for your Ruach HaKadosh. I thank you for the word. I thank you, Abba Kadosh. The greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. I thank you, Abba Kadosh, that you're listening to our prayers. I thank you today, Abba Kadosh, that you are, you are going to strengthen. You are going to save those that, that need to be saved. You need, you're going to heal those, those, those broken hearts, those pains and those wounds that are very deep in, in, in a lot of my friends and brothers and sisters today, Father. Abba Kadosh, for nothing, nothing is impossible for you, and neither is with us. I thank you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. <clears throat> okay. The message today is titled, Love Heals All Wounds. Uh, I was just told, I was on the phone with my sister, and she goes, Oh, but you already brought that on Friday. I said, No. See, this is also about love, but it's nothing to do with what I, I taught or the message that I brought on, on, on Friday, on Shabbat. Why love? Because I truly, truly believe with all my heart, with all my soul, that this is, this is an area that really is missing a lot today. And, and, and I explained this on Shabbat, that, that we really have to come back we really have to come back to, to the basics. Uh, what's the basics? It's really loving. Loving and, and, and really uh, forgiving. Forgiving is part of love. Why am I doing this? Well, um, there's a lot of wisdom and there's a lot of information that I can bring to you uh, when it comes to Hebrew roots. But see, I believe that most that are hearing this are not ready for that. Because a lot of you are hurting. A lot of you are going through things. And, and when you're going through, maybe through some kind of pain or some kind of disease or, or it's depression or oppression or something, uh, or maybe um, low self-esteem or uh, anxiety, you cannot put your mind on the scriptures because it's kind of hard. There will be certain things. What you want to hear when you're in that kind of state, you want to hear good things. You want to hear about love and, and understanding and, and um, you know, we're here for you. And that's very normal. This is why I, don't, I lately have not brought to you Hebraic roots 
because very profound because I see the pain in my brothers and sisters in Christianity. I see it in Messianics. I see it also in my brother Judah. I see it in mankind. So what he has given me is that I have to bring messages to help you to get out of where you're at. Not that I can do that, but he can do this. And also, you can help yourself. And this is what this is the, the, the teaching and the message I bring. Now, when it says, love heals all the wombs. We all have wounds. We, we, we all, at, at one time or another, we all have wounds. We all have wounds. We, we, all of us have experienced trials and pains. All of us are living life wounded and scared. We learn to deal with our wounds and press forward. But where, wh whether we acknowledge it or not, wounds and scars change us. There is no perfect parents. There is no perfect friends. There is no perfect siblings or spouses. We live in a very imperfect world with imperfect humans. We lash out and hurt others because we are broken and need healing ourselves. We ourselves need healing. And this is, this message is for a special person. And who is this special? It is you. I am speaking directly, paning, paning. I am speaking to you. You is you. It's not just one person per se. It's you. It's a special person. And yet it's you. Because everybody to me, everybody to Yahweh, everybody's special. Have you been feeling lonely lately? That's a very, very, very common, very simple question. Have you been feeling lonely lately? Whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're working, whether you're not, it doesn't matter whether you're a man, you're a woman. Have you been feeling lonely lately? The word of the Most High, of the Creator, He says that He will never leave us nor forsake us. Open your eyes and see, right now, right now, as we speak, there are angels of chariots of fire around about you. You have friends in high places, high places. You are connected to the power source of heaven, which is his government, and is backing you up 100%. If Yeshua is on your side, who and what spirit or what person, or what being, or what stress, or what loneliness can be against you? Who is more powerful? The spirit of loneliness or the spirit of Yahweh? Our God, our Elohim in Hebrew, is an Elohim that heals. He heals. It says in the book of Psalms 147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. We need a lot of healing. A lot of people need healing in their lives. We, we don't need any more. We don't, we don't, we don't want a band-aid. We don't want to have a band-aid in our wounds anymore. We really want to be healed. We want we want to be protected. We want to feel the soothing. We want to feel, we want to feel complete healing. And see, for you to understand this, medication, and we're, I'm very happy that we have doctors and, you know, we need doctors. And yes, they give us medication. But did you know that even with the medication you're taking, did you know that your body has a way of healing itself? Did you know that when you cut yourself, a couple of days later, you'll see that it's, it's, almost, it's almost healed. I'm not saying for you not to take your medication. What I'm saying is that you have the power. You literally have the power to heal yourself. And this isn't anything, really, because why? How is that? Because that power really is in your mind. 
Whatever you set your mind to, it will, it will come true. Even healing. Believe me. Now, in Psalms 103, verse 2 to 4, it says, Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. See, he's got benefits. What benefits? Right now, we need healing. So we need a benefit in our lives who forgives our iniquities, who heals our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with a steadfast love, and mercy. The Bible is a book of love. This is his heart. Two sides of his heart. This is his brain. This is intelligent. This is his mercy. But see. In order for you to understand. That the way you believe in, who, in, in God. You need to believe who you are. Because you are. Created, you are made in his image and his likeness, and you were given authority and dominion. You were given the power to excel, to excel, to be healthy, to feel good, to feel, to feel alive, to feel beautiful, to feel that you're, you're smart. Not to feel lonely all the time, not to feel regret, not to feel that you've been rejected. If someone in your life makes you feel so uncomfortable, and it doesn't make you feel so good, then why do you still have this person next to you? Your heavenly father longs to speak to the wounded place in your life and heal them with his love. What heals is literally is the power of love. And in a little bit, I am going to tell you a personal testimony. <laughs> the living beings, all living human beings are instruments in the hands of the divine. Every time you are crying out. In your bedroom, in your shower, in your car, by yourself. Who it does? Every time you're crying because you're hurting. You're crying out to him. You're crying out to, in prayer. You're crying out to other people. It goes in the air. And what happens? It goes to him. And literally, he will send you somebody. He will send you somebody to guide you, to help you. And the person that he really sent was Yeshua. He died for our sins. Okay, now we're saved. But now, and also he has died. Uh, he has died. All the stripes. He was striped for all our for all our heat, for all our pains, and for all our diseases. What past experience, trial, hurt, hurtful words, or person? That are still uh, harmfully affecting your life today. What has happened in your life? What kind of experience that every so often you have memorized it so much in your mind. That you constantly are thinking about that. What, what, what trauma? What has, what really, what it has hurt of you? What word, what has hurt of you? Or person that is still harming you. And it's affecting your life. Think about it. And in order for you to be, do that, you need to be real with yourself. Real with you. Well, I am real, Maria. Well, yes, I know you're real. But you need, to, you need to voice it out. You need to speak it out. Because the more you go into solitude, in other words, the more you go into your, your loneliness and your secluded self, which we need to do that once in a while, but not all the time. You're constantly thinking about the same thing. And guess what you're doing? You're making, your, you're making yourself worse. Literally. Where is it that you need the Ruha or the Spirit of Yahweh to come and speak over your life right now where you're hurting? Where is it? Where do you need the Spirit of Yahweh to come and speak healing over you? Where is it? Where is it? If you, if you are hurting right now, is it your heart? Is it your mind? Is it something somebody did? Something. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to take your hand and I want you to, 
to put your hand upon that place wherever it is. Is it your heart? Is it? Is it what? It, what is it? Is it your mind? Is it your eyes? Is it your? Is it your knees? Please put your hands upon that place. And I'm going to do a prayer for you, Abba Kadosh, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I ask of you, Abba Kadosh, that the spirit of healing comes upon my brother or sister, Abba Kadosh, that are hurting. Abba Kadosh, relieve them, Abba Kadosh, and may they be delivered in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Bring, bring shalom, Abba. Bring shalom. Bring shalom. Bring your love. Bring your love upon my brother or sister, Abba Kadosh. Bring shalom upon this person that desperately needs you, Father. For nothing is impossible you, for you, Abba. Where do you need to cry out in anger or frustration over your wound? What is hurting in you? Eventually... You will come to understand that love heals everything. Love is all there is. Even though, see, we, we, we see the pain and we see the war and we see this. But in reality, you have that love and it needs to be ignited in you because you are love. You come from love. You were created by love. Your mother and father, how did they, how, how, how were you made inside your mother? It was through your mother's love and your father's love. They, they, they went in what, in what is called intimacy and created you. And after you were born, you were born, look at this, because your love comes from Yahweh, from your mother and your father. Even though that maybe parents are not perfect. Because they're not, none of us are perfect. And yes, we can sit down and we can talk about a lot of things that our parents have done or not, or not have done. But this is not the case. The thing is, the thing is to talk about what you have. You have a lot of love in you. A lot. Let me tell you why loneliness or bitterness or, or anger or pride or... I mean, really negative things that is not good. That, and you, it needs to let go. Why? Because bitterness imprisons life. Love releases it. Bitterness paralyzes love, uh, life. But love empowers it. Bitter, bitterness sours life. But love sweetens it, it sweetens it. Bitterness is sickness. It sickens life. But love heals it. Bitterness blinds life. But love anoints its eyes. I am convinced. Me. And, and, and I'm going to tell you in a little bit really what love is that really here in, 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 the, in, the, in the Midwest, in the United States, and other countries too. They have a really misconception of really what love is. And I'm going to speak to you about a love that, is, that comes from the Bible. I am convinced that unconditional love is the most powerful known stimulant of the, immer of the immune system. There is a man, and I don't know if you know him. I, I, I really don't know if you know him. But I know he comes out on TV a lot, and, and, and he's been in a lot of programs. I don't know if he has a book. But I'm going to tell you who he is, and maybe it will come to your mind. This is a man that doesn't have arms and doesn't have legs. When this man speaks... I mean, you, you look at this man, and most of us, if we were in that condition, we would not speak like the way he would. He speaks about life, and you see him laughing, and, and he even swims. And by, by, the, by, by the way, he even got married. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to say something that is not true. I think he had a child. And you hear this man, the way he talks about life, no legs, no arms. He's about very, I don't know, maybe three, maybe two and a half feet, three feet. And this man loves life. Because instead of looking at his handicap, which he says he doesn't have one, he looks at what he does have. And as he's very inspiring, 
he sh- to me he's very inspiring that we have everything we, we we have our we have our body we have everything we're healthy and yet we're still complaining we need to learn from him and i'm sorry but i really don't remember his name i i at this moment i don't remember his name but i'm sure some of you know who he is now now look at this only Besides medication and science and doctors and certain therapy, because we all need that, please, okay? The only thing that really will heal you is love. Anger, guilt, and fear can only destroy and separate you from your true capacity. You have a capacity, not one capacity. You have capacities, capacities. And the biggest one that you have is love. Because love comes from Yahweh, your mother, your father. When they were having intimacy, they made you out of their love. And in there, when they met, when they met there in intimacy, you were born. You were created. You were, you were, you were, you were created. Why? Because that's where they met Yahweh. This is when we become one. So it was you, your mother, your father, and Yahweh. And you came out, you came out with that love. What happened? What happens? We come in this world and we see so many things. And, and the first thing, what is the first thing that we learn when we are, when we are babies, infants? It's, it's really hard. It's really to feel the, the mother's hands hugging us. It's really to feel when we are, when, when our mother is giving us, you know, the, the, the milk in, our, in the breast. What is the baby feeling? It's feeling the arms and also it's feeling the heartbeat. It's feeling the warmth. Every human being is born with love. Every human being. It is a nature in us. And when you have this kind of love, it's a passion. It's a fire. That not only for you, but also for others. Because you begin to connect. You connect with other human beings. And when somebody is hurting, somebody feels insecure, somebody feels lonely, what happens? You begin to to smile. To smile. To to say hello. And that, you know what happens to that person? Something begins to happen in their minds. It's like, it's like, it's like a light that begins to flicker in their mind. And what happens? Your heart begins to pump. And then you begin to feel an energy. You begin to, your immune system begins to grow. You feel great. And you want this person all the time next to you. Because this person has something that you need. And you need, you have something that I need. Because it's a connection. Love is a connection. Love is a strong connection. What do you think is called prayer? What do you think you do in prayer or meditation? What are you doing? You're connecting with a divine. You're connecting with Yahweh. You're connecting with the creator of the universe. You're connecting with power, with a power source. Are you with me? What's the difference between love is in, the, in, 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 in here in America and love is all over the world? And biblical love. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to hear the difference? I'm going to tell you. If you listen closely to the word love, in Hebrew, it's called ahaba. Ahaba. It is the sound like when you're breathing. Ahaba. Literally, it really is ha-a. the first word, the first letter that, that is it is an A. A is for the for 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 the name of Abba. Ah, 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 Haba. The first syllable, what do you do? What do you do? You exhale. The second syllable, what do you do? You inhale. The third syllable is ba. And has its own distinct meaning, which means in Hebrew, it means. Come, come. Now, what does this mean? When Yahweh exhales, exhales, look at this. Mankind inhales. And what does that mean? What came was love. He exhaled love and we inhale love. Remember when he says, uh, when he went to Adam and he says, and he breathed on him, 
the breath of love, and, 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 and the man became a living soul, guess what came inside of him? It was love. Guess what do you think life is? It's love. So when Yahweh goes like this, he's breathing love. I mean, I'm sorry. He's uh, uh, um, not breathing. I'm sorry. He is, 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 is giving love. And when we breathe inside, we are inhaling that love. But see, when the body is kind of down and the body is, is not in, in the right condition, it's not balanced, what happens? You become weak. You, you, you become weak. This is why oxygen is very important in our body. The higher the oxygen, the better it is because the less you're going to get sick. No other words come forth from the mouth so easily. No other words connect to us so naturally to Elohim. Yahweh's gift of life is the gift of love. What, we, what you have is the gift of love. It is a gift. Nobody else has given it to us. Only the creator. And you have that gift. It is beyond uh, your imagination. If not for the love of Elohim, if, if it wasn't for the love that he has for us, we will not be here. Do you believe this? If it's not for the love that he has for human beings, we would not be here. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish for everlasting life. And if he, if he gave his son for us, he gave his only begotten son for us, what do you think he's not going to give us now that his son is on the right hand of, of the father? What is he not going to give us? Have you or have you not been asking him that you want deliverance? That you want healing? That you want to feel love? That you want, that you want to feel better about yourself? Have you been asking him that? Have you? You want to prosper. You want to, you want to be in abundance. Whatever it is, is called love. Love. Because love is stronger than death. The creator's gift of love is our gift of life. Our heart, our souls, our might are merely some of the many gifts of love that El Shaddai has given us. Can you truly understand and even try to comprehend the Ahabab, which means in Hebrew means love? Of God for us? Can you understand? Can you really comprehend that? And I'm speaking right now to some of you that are, are mothers and fathers. And maybe some of you are, are grandparents, uh, grandfathers, and, grand and grandmothers. What kind of bonding, what kind of special bonding does a mother have when that child comes up, no matter how, ma no matter how much pain she has gone through? What kind of bonding does that father has with his son or his daughter? That when that father looks at that son and daughter, this, this is my seed. And when somebody comes to her, he wants to protect them. What kind of bonding is there in a grandmother and a grandfather with their grandchildren? And I'm speaking in the normal. I'm not speaking of the abnormal. We have many abnormal grandparents and we have many abnormal parents. Not talking about that. I'm talking about the real thing. I'm speaking about you. I'm speaking about you. Because you're real. You know what it feels to love a child, to love your own son and your daughter, to love your grandson and your grand and your granddaughter. You know what it is to feel there's a connection and it's very powerful. Super powerful. What do children do when they fall down and they hurt themselves? And really, they scrape real hard and, and blood is coming. Not that they need stitches. What is it that they want? They only want to hug. Hug me and protect me. And they start crying once you hug them and you, you, know, you caress them. What do they do? They stop crying and they're hugging you. Because it's called love. Love. <sighs> What's the difference between American love or, or Midwest love or the way many believe what love is or all over the world or 
Hebrew love or, or, or Bible love? What's the difference? What is love? What is love? Let me, let me tell you the difference. In Hebrew, the meaning of ahabab, which is love, it really means one, 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 two words. I give. And also that I love. We now see the connection between the two words, I give and I love. Love is giving. That's all it is. It's nothing else. To love is to give. You, according to the Bible, you do not fall in love. You give love. We think that falling in love, falling in, and if you really think, I mean, I, I took that word, the word falling, it's like you're falling backwards and you're falling. I'm falling in love. Like if you're going into some kind of a, a well and you're falling. I don't want to, I mean, and I have said this many times too, but that's the wrong thing. No, 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 no. I give love, and when I give love, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to receive it back. Now, giving is a condition that, in, that creates and sustains love. If you don't give and you do not create love, if you don't give love and you don't create love, how are you thinking that it's going to stay there if you're not giving it? How is that going to be? Without giving, there is no connection to sustaining. None. Okay. Why am I saying this? This is my personal testimony. Do you want to hear it? My husband and I were married at the age of 18. We had our first child at the age of 20. I had my daughter. But what happened? Something happened. There was a neglect, neglect by the doctor because the doctor left as soon as she came. As soon as she came out, so nothing was clean inside of me. He left the nurse. The nurse begins to put her hand inside of me and begins to take the placenta piece by piece. And apparently she didn't take the whole thing out. I didn't know. That was my first child. I go home. 17 days later, or 15 days, 15 or 16 days later, I begin to have a fever. I didn't feel good. I thought that was normal. I never had a child. So what happens when, you, when I was 17 days that I had my daughter? I remember I was standing in the, in, in my, in the bedroom, and I felt like something was coming out of me. Now, without me knowing it, my blood at that moment was completely poisoned because there was still a big, huge piece of placenta that stayed inside of me. I sat in the toilet, and by the time I got up, I was not even there two minutes. The toilet went, the toilet went all the way up, full of blood, and, and chunks of blood. I mean, chunks of blood. They rushed me to the hospital. I was in the hospital to make this short. I was in the hospital. They, do, they did a DNC, and so, but my blood was already, it was, I was poisoned. Okay? Transfusions. Um, uh, IVs, all, I mean, IVs, I had, must have had, I, I think it was between three or four IVs. I really was dying. They couldn't undo anything for me. They did everything. I, I was, I was, I had special, I had heart specialists, specialists. I had everything specialist. I was in a, I was in a room, which was a private room, because I couldn't have anybody next to me. I couldn't. Literally, I was dying. My, my, my waist, from my waist down, I couldn't move because the pain, it was like when somebody's dying of cancer. At least that's, it was a very horrible, horrible pain. Worse, it's about a hundred times worse than having a baby. So what happens? Uh, the doctor says uh, to my father, uh, I'm losing money with your daughter. Of course, these are two Spanish doctors. My father's Cuban and so on. See, my, my, and they're very tall. My father was six feet tall. My father said, if my daughter doesn't uh, survive this, I personally will take care of you. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what happens? Look at, look at, what, love, look at what love does. Uh, they would remove blood out of the same hole three times a day, and there were four, four tubes, and they were this huge. I, was, I looked like a drag at it. This was all, and then water was coming out of it because it, my veins were so swollen. 
But guess what? And, 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 and I knew something was wrong. I was 20 years old, dying in a, dying in a deathbed because this is, this is happening to me. And what happens? All of a sudden, I see all my, all my family around my bed because I was dying. I was 90%, not that I was dead, but almost dead and 10% alive. Not that I was on machines or anything like that. But let me tell you this, and I see everybody. Everybody is, is and, and, and I say, what's, and I see some of them very, and guess what? To me, that manifestation was a manifestation of love. It was love. My father that I never saw crying, I saw my father crying for the first time because his daughter that's 20 years old is dying. They could not even see her daughter, his daughter, I mean, my daughter. So I saw the manifestation of that love around me. And I started praying and I said, I'm not going to die. I don't care, but I'm not going to die. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to die. So anyway, I had an experience. They left. And the next morning, I had an experience. And I'm not going to go into that. Not because I don't want to talk about it because my time is short. But in reality, I had sort of like a supernatural experience. Literally, I began to die. And I had, I had an experience. And the only thing, I started crying. And I said, please don't take me. Just give me, give me a month to live. And let me, let me enjoy my daughter for one month. Let me take her on a stroller. Please. And, and let me tell you, literally... I, they already, the nurses, the doctor says she is going to die. But the love that I saw within my family, the love that I saw in that room, the love, the love, and then the love that I have and the faith that I had in God was so big. Let me tell you what happened. I said, please don't let me die. So anyway, I closed my eyes. The pain was horrific. And when I had that vision, the pain started going away. And, and besides, two, two weeks of a fever between 104 and 108 that would, not, that would not leave. And actually, I have 15% of my hearing that has gone because of that. The next morning, I begin to sweat. <laughs> I was taught how to walk because I was walking like a person, like an elderly that has no strength. I was walking. They had to teach me how to walk. And, today, and that wasn't... That wasn't when I was 20 years old. When I got home and I saw my daughter after two or three weeks, I started sobbing because I thought I was never going to see my daughter again. Well, today I'm 58 years old. And because of that love that my family showed me, that is a very powerful connection because I was on all kinds of medication. And yes, it was working. But in reality, not even the fever was leaving because I was completely, I was completely poisoned. And today I'm going to tell you, this is why I speak like this. You know why? Because love is what got me all this way through. I'm 58 years old. My daughter is 37. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter what you have gone through, how many trials, how many tribulations, how many times you went into the waters, how many times you went into the fire, how many times you've been in, the, in hell's kitchen, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're here. Yes, you're in pain and you don't want this. And yes, but I'm going to tell you this, how much do you want to live? How much? Do you love yourself? How much do you love? There's got to be a passion in you that wants to, that you want to live, especially your life. Your life is very precious. You have a tremendous gift and no one can stop you. The true relationship that are meaningful in our lives are those in which mutual giving takes place. When you love, you give. And when you give, it's a natural law. You get it back. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. When you give love, you're going to receive love. And if you're not receiving love, is that person doesn't have love because somebody cannot give you what they don't have. A person cannot give you what they don't have. But you have that love. It's inside of you. And when you, when you want to be loved, when you want to feel that love, that tense, that, that, it, that it is an energy that is unbelievable. 
Begin to give it. This literally is what I'm doing with you. Even though you're not here and even though I am not there, but in reality, we are. We are. Because... The Bible says you want to be in abundance. You want to grow. There's things that you need. There's things that you're asking him to. You know what? You need to be a blessing for him to bless you. And that is reality. It's called the sowing and the reaping. I am sowing love. I am sowing your word. Guess what's going to happen? Not because I'm looking for that. It's just automatic. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Do you understand that? The giving may be a physical, may be emotional, may be intellectual, or a combination. But without giving, which is if you don't give love from ourselves, no relationship can last long. See, and why do I talk about love all the time and lately? Because that is a very powerful force. And, and love is the greatest of all. See, what you're asking him, maybe you're asking him for abundance and money, or you're asking him that you want to feel love, or, or you want to feel special, or you want healing in your body. I mean, begin to feel love and begin to give it. You will see what's going to happen. That is the secret of love. When you give, you, you, you receive it back. That is revealed to us by the Hebrew language. This is the secret that invested in the language by the creator. What, how do you think he created everything? I have a question for you. Do you feel at times that it's a waste of time? And what is the purpose of living? See, you need to understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nothing you are doing is a waste of time. We mature in life when we are doing, when we are going through difficult times. It gives you, it gives us character. It is his doing and is marvelous in our eyes. See, Yahweh or, or the creator's mindset or thinking is not our thinking. His has no limits. And sometimes we put too many limits on ours. His ways is not our ways. See, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his thoughts and his ways. So let me ask you another question. Who is more powerful? The potter? Or the clay? Who is more powerful? The potter or the clay? So see, biblically speaking, he says that he created good and he also created evil. This is in the book of Isaiah. He created light and he created darkness. He created, he created blessings and he created curses. So doesn't it make sense, literally, if we are to really better ourselves, is really go to the source of everything? Yes or no? We need to go to the source. See, this week somebody said to me, how come you don't teach this, you don't teach Hebrew, Hebrew roots really deep the way you know in, in Facebook? I said, I can't, because they're not ready. They're, they're not ready, so see, what... What he's doing with you right now, he's preparing your soil. When you're going to sow a seed, the earth is hard, so you have to remove it, and you have to prepare, you have to water it. So you're being watered, and you're being prepared through the word, and you're being helped with your, with your sickness and your disease, and maybe negative thinking, or certain things, or, ne or maybe loneliness, or depression, or certain things. And guess what? Because he's preparing you. He's cultivating. Yes, he's cultivating you. Because where do we come from? We come from the dirt. So do we need to be removed? In other words, not removed, but I mean, he needs to cultivate us. 
He needs to prepare. He needs to develop the, the soil, sort of speaking. He needs to prepare the soil. And what is the soil? It's our hearts and our minds. <laughs> you keep on searching for something to fill that emptiness inside of you. But it seems it doesn't get you anywhere. Is that true? In other words, you're searching for something to fill something inside of you, and it hasn't happened. It doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> Understand this. Somebody cannot make you happy. How can another human being fill your spirit, your spirit tank, when yours is running on empty? The Comforter, the Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, El Shaddai, uh, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, the power of heaven and earth lives inside of you. Yahweh gives us His best. And guess what we're constantly giving Him? Our worst. See, He's giving, you, he's giving us right now His best. And what are we doing? Some people even, even blame God for what's happening in their lives. No. What's happening in our lives, 99.9 of the time, is because we have, we have caused this. We have caused this. It doesn't come without a cause. Yes. A curse does not come without a, cur a cause. Don't doctors and, 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 and also uh, specialists, and, you know, don't they tell you don't, you have to eat healthy? What are we doing? <laughs> We go, to, we go to the supermarket and whatever, oh, and potato chips, and then we got candy bars, and then we got junk food, and then, of course, <laughs> uh, fast foods. Oh, whoo, that's, even, that's even the bomb. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but you know what? Eat less of it and more of healthy food. See, it's all our mindset. So when we're eating bad food, what are we bringing to our bodies? Sickness and diseases and negative things. We are not energized. Like the ever ready battery, the, ba the, the rabbit. Ding, 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 ding. We're not like that. Because our immune system is down. We don't want our immune system down because we are not from the earth. We are from heaven. We are not the tail. We are the head. We are from above. We are not from beneath. We are the lender, which means we are the bank and we are not the borrowers. You need to speak the word. You need to speak to yourself how beautiful you are. You need to ask yourself questions. And I'm going to, I will, I promise you, when you begin to ask, that, like some of these questions I'm asking you, you're going to see in the mirror, you begin to change. You, you, it's, it's like, it's like you're, you're transferring and you're rewiring and you're doing a shift. Do you want to see if you feel, feel that sick? Go outside here in Florida. We're talking about Florida, maybe Arizona, a place that is sunny. Go outside for just 10 minutes before 10 o'clock in the morning and just feel the sunshine. And I guarantee you, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel, you're going to feel better. Just that alone. Now, Yahweh gives us his best and we're constantly giving us his worst. So what has more power? His best or our worst? So we need his best. You see, people around you, you see people around you having fun, and they say, and you say, what's the point? Blessed happy is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the world, nor stands in the way of disobedience, nor sits in the seats of the proud, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his laws does he meditate day and night. The joy you have the joy you have, the love you have, the world did not give it to you. Did you know this? See, you want somebody to give you love when that person has never given you love. So how can he give you what he doesn't have? Your joy, the world did not give it to you. And the joy cannot take it away. The love that Yahweh has given you, the world did not give it to you. Yahweh gave it to you. The world cannot take it away. The, do the joy you have, the world cannot take it away because the world did not give it to you. The people in the world cannot give you what they don't have. If they don't have Yahweh, if they don't have love, they will not have, Elo they, if they don't have Elohim, if they don't have God, where that's the source of all love, 
If they don't have it, they cannot give you love. Not that they cannot give, not that they cannot give it to you. It's because they too are, they too have problems. And they don't know how to get out of it. Because they think that another human being or another woman or another man is the one that's going to make them feel great. No. Maybe physically, but that's about it. Because people that we encounter with, everybody has problems. Every human being has problems. But it all depends how you react with problems. Because problems are not there that you go and say, I want all these problems. That's not true. But it all depends because we bring some, most of the time these problems in our life. We bring, we bring sickness. We bring things. And yes, it can be inherited. And I'm talking about sickness and diseases. But we bring things in our lives because what we associate with. For Elohim is love. Keep your eyes on the things above and not on the things beneath. For we walk by faith and not by sight. On your mark with faith. Get set spiritually. Grow. Grow with Yahweh. Grow with love. We need to grow in love. Be in love again with life. Be in love. This woman that is speaking to you right now, Maria, I, Maria, that is speaking to you, if it wasn't for the love that he has given me, if it wasn't for the love of my family that were there, if it wasn't for the desire for me to live, because I had a passion to be with my daughter, I would not have been here today and he gave me that desire. You know why? Because you have the power to change things in your life. You got that power. See, many are saying, well, if God is willing, are you for real? Are you really for real? Do you really think that God, if God, if, now what is if? God is willing? No, honey, God is not willing. God knows he is. The one that is if is you. It's you if you are willing, not if God is willing. God wants everything good for you. He wants, do you, do you want good things for you? See, I'm being myself. I'm being myself. And that's the Cuban, the, you know, the Cuban fired up kind of kind of deal. Because I'm very expressive and I'm very touchy-touchy and I, I say what I feel. And why shouldn't I? And see, I, I tell everybody, you know, sometimes I, I kind of take it a little bit because Cubans do that. They talk a little bit high. Well, I tell them I got very good, I got, <laughs> I got very good lungs. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how you say it. It's being yourself. The most beautiful thing is being yourself. I don't want to imitate anybody, and neither should you. Let me ask you this. Which is more powerful, the spiritual world or the natural world? Which one do you, which one do you seek the most? See, you know why the spiritual world is the most powerful one? Because... We live in a body that is natural. But what lives inside of us is our spirit man, which is more powerful. You say lately, no one understands me. Have you ever, have you said this lately? Nobody understands you. Well, for you to understand this is that you have many people that know you. They know your name, where you come from. But very few people understand really who you are inside of you. Cursed is the man that trusts in another man, but blessed is a man who puts his trust in Yahweh. Yahweh will give you the desires of your heart. What is that your desire? What are you desiring? What is it that you're desiring? Make a goal. Put it down. Write it down. He is listening to you 20. Listen, listen very carefully. He's listening to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. Why do you think he had me write this to you? Why do you think? Hmm? He's answering you. And I know he is. Remember? Remember you did not choose him. See, you didn't choose him. You didn't choose the way you were going to be born. That love that's inside of you, he chose that for you. And he chose that for me. 
But that's what you have to ignite. Let ignite the faith, ignite the love, ignite, ignite, because love is power. I did not give you a spirit of fear. Look at what he said. I did not give you a spirit of fear, but I gave you a spirit of power, of love and power and a control mind. Practice this all this week. He did not give me a spirit of, of fear. He gave me a spirit of power and love and, and a control of mind. Begin to say this continuously during the day today and all this week until next Friday. <laughs> Look at this. Only a father can understand his child. May Yeshua open our understanding or your understanding on who really, what kind of power you possess that comes from him. Because let me tell you, inside of you is your best friend, is your lawyer, is your healer, is your beloved, is your husband, is your banker, is your teacher, is your peace, is your reward, is your redeemer, is your deliverer. Is, and let me tell you, he understands that you, you have needs, and not need, needs. Do you remember when Salomon said, I want wisdom? Remember that? A king didn't lack anything. He was, he was brought up with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a plate, with a gold plate, and a, and, a, and, a, and a silver spoon. He says, since you didn't ask me for wealth, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you wealth. Listen very carefully. Today especially this, this message was for you. Because he loves you that much. But you have to love yourself also. You have to look at yourself. And you have to love yourself the way you are. The way you feel. And feel his embrace. And his arms around you. Because the way he does this is through his ruhas, through his spirit. Love is within you. And has always been walking alongside with you. See, you are the apple of his eyes. Anything that hurts you or touches you, touches the apple of his eyes. And Yahweh will take vengeance in your enemy. Sickness right now is your enemy. Loneliness is your enemy. So guess what? Guess what? What has happened? That sickness and that loneliness and that depression has become Yahweh's enemy. But you, this is something that you need to believe in your heart. You need to believe. Believe who you are. Believe that you can. You can create. You can. You can make. You can make anything happen. Anything good happen in your life through your thoughts and believing in your heart. Why? Because. Thoughts of the language of the mind. And feelings is the language of the heart. And when they work together, what you're creating is power. No weapon, nobody that comes against you, nothing, nothing, nada, no entity, no, 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 no obstacles that come against you will prosper. Do you believe this? You are want, you are fearfully fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> Hebraically speaking, the word love ahabad is a verb and a noun. It is a it is an act of doing. Love is not something you wait for. Love you have to do. You put, have to put to an you need to put it to action. And when you do, you will receive love. A habab is not just a feeling. It's also an act of giving. And this is just for you because I got to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm done with time, but I, let me just very quickly. This is for you. This is the day that Yahweh has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am rejoicing right now your happiness with you. It is time to live. Live is a word we need to hear when we feel the raw pains of rejection, isolation, and abuse. The word is live. To all your abuse, 
to all your traumas, to all your trials, to all your tears, to all your pains, all your addictions, live. Why? Because you did not die and you're still living. You did not lose your mind. You did not fall off the end of the earth. You did not crumble into heap. You are alive. Rejoice. You are strong. Rejoice. You made it. Rejoice. You are a survivor. Rejoice. When you pass through the waters, which means problems, Yahweh will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not, which means the storms of life, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you should not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am, I am, Yahweh, has, has been and is with you. He's been with you all this time right there, just like footprints. He's been with you, with you all the time, just like footprints. I am. Yahweh has been and is with you. Begin to us say, say every day too. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am a child of the living Elohim. I am healed. I am smart. Begin to say I am, but not to I am on the press. Don't say that because whatever you say, it will come to pass. Rejoice for every, for every day is a gift. That is why it's called the present. Fall seven times. Stand eight. Do not let, do, do not let, do not stop living. Instead, learn to live. Learn to live life now. Rejoice for Yahweh has made this day just for you. He made this moment for you. You're alive and kicking. Congratulations, Masal Tov. You made it this far. You are breathing. And on your way to the rest of your day, woman, man, sister, brother, there is an awesome power inside of you. There's an awesome power called love. Awaken the love in you. You are strong and willing to nurture others. Start nurturing yourself. Your past pay for it. You lose. Be loose from the past failures, temptation, guilt, things that are past, relationships that are over. It is time for you to be loose from the heavy chains you have been carrying. That you do not let, you do not let peace enter into your body and your mind. You have the choice to be loose from the chains or be happy or be ha and be happy or remain chained and be miserable. The choice is yours. I have said before you death and uh, life and death, blessings and cursing, therefore choose life. Deuteronomy 30:19. If you know what you want, to look at this, if you know what you want, you will get there. But you have to have a passion with love to get there. You need to see yourself as a missile. A missile when it's thrown, when it's, when it's sent by an airplane or a, a submarine. It is it's to a target. You need to be that missile. What are you hitting? You need to program yourself on what you're going for. Identifying your problems is the beginning of solving them. Experience the freedom. Yahweh says in John 8.30, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free, because there's nothing, there's nothing beyond the truth. Are you willing to let go? Are you willing to let go? To let, are you willing to let him do his work inside of you? Are, are you willing to do this? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired? When will you say enough? Have you said enough? Because sometimes it takes for you to say enough. I had enough. Genuine, genuine happiness comes from setting challenges, goals. And not by comparing yourself with others. Stop that. 
the pinking cannot compare to the thumb. Yet that's impossible. Stop comparing yourself with other people. A happy life is one that, cre that you create yourself. It cannot be copied from somebody else. Because you are an original. <laughs> and with this I leave. When you're working in your true self, you're working in the quality and in the gift of love. You came out of love, and a person cannot give you what they don't have. That is why when you, this is Yahweh speaking, when, when you're seeking him, or you're seeking answers that you want, he says, when you knock, I will open the door for you. When you ask me, I will give it to you. When you search, I brought it to you, but you, did not, you, you were too busy doing and, and, and paying attention to other things. When you cried out, I save your tears. This is him speaking. When you are confused, I place protection in you. When you want help, I come to you. When you are wounded, I heal you. When you are tired, I carry you. Footprints. When you are lonely, I am. I am. I am with you. When you call me Father Abba, I answer and I say, here I am, my child. Every tear you have shed, every pain you have felt, every thorn in your heart, every sleepless night on your pillow, every lonely step you walk by yourself, I, your father, Abba, father, have been with you all the time. The problem is that you were too busy, too occupied, too worried, too stressed out, too worn out, too blind to see that all the time I am has always been right next to you, but you have not seen me. But today I am is telling you, I am with you. I am with you. My child, I promise you something. My child, I have promised you something. And my word is true, and I will give you what I, I will, I will give you what, you, what I promise you. Do you believe this? But have you kept his promise to him? Wait for it. Wait for what he has promised you. Wait for it, for it will come to pass. My love for you, says he. It's so big that I gave you the best of me. I gave you my son, my only begotten son. Just for you, my child, the battle is not yours. You are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Because I love you. Your problems are my problems. Your enemy is my enemy. Give what you have, which is love that I have given you. And you will see the manifestation. Hallelujah. That's going to come upon your life. And I will give you what I have. And guess who gets the better end? Is it Yahweh? Or is it us? You are amazing and wonderfully made with, the, with my own hands, says the creator. I created you with the breath of my being. I, ex, I exhale my love and you inhale my love. Marvelous are you, you. For I have made you in my image and my likeness. And your soul knows this very well. I am with you wherever you go. To all my brothers and sisters out there, I love you with a love, honestly, and I ask in prayer that he helps you that, that, that to use me and to use other people, really to help you, to, to help you come out of where you're at. You're not alone. We love you. Shalom Aleichem from First Yahudim Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. Shavua Tov. Have a blessed week.